What I tell my 14 year old son is know that if anything ever feels too heavy, you need to come and ask for help. You need to have that conversation, whether it's with me, with your father, with a therapist, but don't, don't leave it for another day. Mm. Don't put it in the mm. back burner. Don't let it become so heavy mm. that it becomes so painful mm. that you have to leave this physical world to escape, mm. you know? And that is mm. what happened with my cousin Alexia. Like yeah. being trans was too much for her. Hey, what's up, good people? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Show, the talk show that highlights up and coming local legends and founders who they take down on their vision, even when all stuck against them. Today, I'm your host, as usual. I bring the best people in KC, top entrepreneurs, top leaders in KC. And today, when I went above and beyond, today we're going to be talking about mental health. We're going to be talking about Mama Earth, we're gonna be talking about wellness, we're gonna talk about leadership, and my guest today has been featured on Fox 4, uh, Her Life Magazine. Help me make welcome my guest today. She is the founder of Your Lobos Vitality. Help me welcome the one and only Alex McCandison. How you doing? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank Good you to for have you here. Me. Yeah, How's no, your day thank going? Thank you for having me. It's been amazing. You know, uh, it was really beautiful actually preparing for this. Whenever yes. I do any type of events, I always meditate and kind of visualize the energy of like, what is the intention of this? How do I need to step into this? And yes. there are a lot of messages okay. when we talked. And, you know, we were supposed to get together a couple of weeks ago. True. And some things have shifted in my personal life. So that happens for a reason. Yes. Because yes. it would have been a completely different interview a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And so today I am fired up. There's okay. a lot of passion. There okay. is a lot of things that I want to talk and address all of Kansas City. Let's let's go. Um, and uh, behind the scene, you know, was that a prayer we did? That was a prayer, right? We held hands. And we, yeah. And a prayer? So it, it's what we're doing is we're creating sacred space, okay. right? We're okay. honoring. We're asking permission. My intention is to step into the space and have people hear us with an open heart, with an open mind, okay. and be able to receive. Maybe there's a nugget of healing for you. Maybe yes. there's a message. Maybe there's a tool that you can utilize later. And so by doing that for me, it opens up the space for you to tap into a deeper part of yourself. So Beautiful. I wanted to make sure that our higher versions step forward yeah. and that this interview was more than just an interview. See, I'm always open, but my guy, Eric, behind the scene, he, he was freaked out. He was like, oh, what, 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 this lady's weird, right? What are we doing? Yes. <laughs> so that's one of the main things I think a lot of people in Kansas City are like, who is this chick? What does she do? You know, she's she's a little different and, and, that, and that's okay. Like, I feel like I'm bridging the gap between between mm -hmm. spirituality, ancestry, indigenous ceremony, and also the Western world yeah. of technology yes. and growth and entrepreneurship. And I like to play in both worlds. Well, I'm, we're going to get it all into it. I know we also had cacao behind the scene, which yes. we're going to talk about. I really want to dive into that. Yeah. Um, but before we do anything, um, give people a brief bio about who you are and how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So I'm Alejandra Villalobos McAnderson. I know that that's a mouthful, but... No, my, my name is also a mouthful, so you ain't got no problems at all. My yeah. name is a mouthful, too, so, so go ahead. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I started Villalobos Vitality um, because we believe in the continuation of a beautiful and powerful life through the connection of mind, body, and spirit. And so this isn't something that I stepped into or that I even dreamed about when I was younger. This is, I say this isn't what I do, but this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. business is around that, mm -hmm. right? So um, I kind of stepped into this business kicking and screaming. I did not want to be an entrepreneur. I did not wow. want to own my own business, but this was such a gift that I had to take a leap of faith mm -hmm. and step into who I am. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, man, I want to address this before we go further. What is cacao? And yeah. tell me more about that because we had a lot behind the behind the scene, and it yes. was it was it was I would say it was a little bitter. 
Mm -hmm. It was a little bit of like, if you take it, it was like not spicy, but it, if it had a feeling to it. Yeah. So, yeah. So cacao is unprocessed chocolate. That's one of the things that I do with my business. We have, okay. we have ceremony, we create sacred space, whether it's my one-on-one -on -one coaching and sessions, or even going into local businesses and teaching people about mental health okay. and giving them tools to relax. But cacao is a way to connect into the energy of mama earth, mm. right? Mm. It's unprocessed processed chocolate. We talked about how it has so many um, benefits because it has minerals and most of the food that we have is not mineral dense because of our soil. So it has a ton of zinc and magnesium. Okay. And so it's great for the body. It's almost like drinking a cup of coffee, but it's much gentler on your nervous system and your kidneys and your liver. But what it does energetically and spiritually, it's a heart opener. Okay. It okay. allows you to kind of get out of the headspace and into the heart space okay. and I love drinking cacao because it connects me to my ancestors it connects me to that part of me that is limitless it reminds me of my purpose okay. and so I wanted to start this and I wanted to share that with both of you so that you yeah. guys could you know we'll and see and it's not cocoa happens. is it cocoa no okay it's cacao make that distinction ca yeah so cocoa is just a part of the, the different kind of chocolate okay. but yeah. cacao basically is untouched un processed raw chocolate mm, right mm, so mm. um we take the cacao beans and they get ground up and then um the way that i okay. make it i'll add different things to it because it is very bitter yeah and yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. add honey there's different things that you can do to it but okay. it's a way to open up does it give you a buzz or? It can make you feel very euphoric. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So when we do healing circles, we'll okay. drink this. Okay. One, I will say it's legal. It's yeah. just chocolate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> it just, it's just, just so people know. That's well, it's, a, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a brownie, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. And <laughs> But um, it's a way to let go of the mind. Yes. Most of the time we're just living in this world True. and we're on autopilot. And that's where a lot of our stress and mental, you know, distress comes from is mm. constantly being here mm. in a way that we when we step into the heart, it completely shifts us from the inside out. And as we heal from the inside out, it starts to shift our world around us. Mm, mm. And you told me, I don't know why I'm lingering this cacao business, but you told me there was levels to it. So cacao is like the first level and then the second level and then it's on the yes. top level. So now we're getting into, you know, a conversation about psychedelics, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. Psychedelics are starting to become very popular now, especially with mental health. We mm -hmm. have CAP, which is ketamine assisted psychotherapy. You know, my partner and I, Dr. Watkins, came up and created Reikin, which is ketamine assisted Reiki sessions. Okay. And so mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. way to use psychedelics to step out of the mind, right? I say therapy, talk therapy is so amazing and it's great to have someone to go and talk to. But for me personally, I did talk therapy for many years and it allowed me to understand um, the situations that were happening, but it was just in my head. I could mm. understand like, okay, that's a pattern. I get that. But it wasn't until I started to incorporate some of these other alternative methods like energy work where I started to feel different, where I started to have experiences and heal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So we wow. know, you know, first cacao, it's very gentle, it's legal, it's just chocolate. Yes. And then, you know, people will then sometimes experiment with psilocybin or magic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have Big Mama ayahuasca and, and that's Earth. becoming yeah and that's becoming very <laughs> popular people travel to peru and to other places where it's legal it's not legal in the u.s to be able to have these very euphoric intense um experiences mm. right because what it does it reboots your system it reboots who you think you are the wiring in the brain Dang. and so it's a hard reset Ooh, all right that's, that scares me mm -hmm. um <laughs> but again i'm open to things but it's like that might that might treat me a little bit um but i want to know this though because i know that you know where i'm from um mental health you know wellness we don't even have a war for therapy where i'm from mm -hmm. um i know that you know when it comes to i feel like in some areas where i grew up in when people say i'm with mother earth they see that person as a voodoo person or 
some you know some medicinal person right yeah. um for you how did you even get into you know mental health like how do you even get exposed to that so it started with my own personal journey you know about uh 12 years ago my body started to break down mm -hmm. i would break out in hives and in my mind i'm like i'm cool i'm cool nothing's happening mm -hmm. and i wasn't paying attention to my body i was carrying so much stress from my parents from my family situation and dropping so much of those stress hormones in the body that my body is like, this is too much, mm. right? And it started to break out in hives. And I mean, my lips would blow up, my whole back would be covered in hives. And so my body finally got my attention, Wow! right? And so I had to figure out what was going on. And so through that journey, I tried Western medicine for many years. I was taking, you know, seven different prescriptions a day and nothing was really working because a lot of the times we are only dealing with the symptoms mm -hmm. like these these things will make you feel better, but we're not really addressing mm. where does this come from, mm. the root of the problem. Yes. And yes. so... Thankfully, I met an amazing healer, Dr. Robin, who is an amazing chiropractor locally. And she's the first person that talked to me about whole person health, right? And I thought, she's going to put me on a diet and she's going to make <laughs> me work out. And she did, but she also talked about what are your feelings? Um, mm, I want mm. you to also start doing yoga. I want you to start seeing a therapist. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. not just the physical body, but the four quadrants of wellness, which she showed me, which is mechanical, chemical, psycho-spiritual, and energetic. So mechanical is how is your body feeling? Do I work out, right? And everyone knows about mechanical. I work out every day. I move my body. True. feels great. And then chemical, what are you putting inside and on your body? Mm. So like I'm eating the right food. I take you know, a lot of supplements. Um, but then sometimes we forget about the last two, which is the psycho-spiritual and the energetic. So the psycho-spiritual, what am I a part of? What makes my heart sing? You know, what brings joy into this mm. experience mm. that I'm here on earth school and also energetic. We are energetic beings, right? And we experience energy all of the time, but we usually don't pay attention to it because we're so focused on just going from point A to point B. True. But if you take a moment and you think about certain songs, right, they either make you smile, make you dance, or some make you sad and make you heartbreak. And that's just energy within those songs. So when you start to to look at everything as energy, and then you start to notice certain people or experiences or things, and you start to see what is life giving and what is life taking. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, because I know I say that I'm a spiritual person, I'm not religious, mm -hmm. but now hearing you, it happens to be that there's different levels of spirituality. Yeah. Because, you know, I go to church, you know, every now and then and I, I pray. Um, talk about that, like religion, spirituality. Yeah. Like, what is that? What is So a lot of that? people yeah. sometimes have a blockage of what I do because because of the religion. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, you know, my priest or I've heard that that's not OK to do energy work. Or, and uh, to me, I say, take what you need and leave the rest. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If we start to focus on the things that we have in common instead of the things that keep us apart, then sometimes you might miss out on an experience that you might need. So um, mm. a lot of people sometimes come and they're like, I don't know what you do. Like, I love Jesus. And I'm like, great. I love Jesus too. <laughs> I love Jesus too. I am a woman of faith. I believe that there, but I'm not just limited to mm. Jesus. Mm. I believe mm. that there's mm. a lot of benevolent beings. I believe that there's, you know, magic with your ancestors and where you come from and mm. your lineage. Mm. I believe that connecting to mama earth, like I never felt more connected to God than I do now mm. because I used to think that God was something outside of me, right? And I had to be a good girl and I had to behave to be worthy mm. of God's love. Mm. And now like with this and with my journey, I'm like, oh no, he's in me mm -hmm. and he's in you. And it's that light that shines mm. and I can see God in everyone and not just in every person, but in every tree, every bird, every blade of grass. And I live in a life where I experience him instead of just thinking it's, you know, a big daddy in the sky. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100% just because, you know, where I grew up, like back home, 
Um, when someone is sick, first, in most, in most cases, they don't just go to the hospital. They first ask, what is the spiritual um, reflection? Of what, what is it showing us right now? Yeah. Um, as opposed to just going to the hospital. I mean, I know, you know, the Western world that we live in is so everything has to go to a hospital. But sometimes it's more spiritual than that. Mm -hmm. Like, even my mom, who is like, you know, she's a Christian. But we have, like, relatives who are, like, very um, earth you know, mm -hmm. centralized, like they can go into like a whole bush yeah. and find medicine, just find a leaf and break it out and put it together and give it to you and you will heal. Yeah. Right. So like, there's that balance that we understand back home that there's a spiritual side of things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like here it's not the same. Like what, what, how do you even navigate that? Because like people get scared, like, oh, I don't want to do that. Right. That's too much. So uh, the way that I navigate through those, it's, I, I just allow for people to be where they're at and I meet them where they're at, mm, right? Mm, so mm, mm. I never push anyone. I always tell people, like, take what you need and leave the rest. Yeah, yeah. There may be some things that I say that resonate with you and you're True. like, yes, and like leave the rest, but you don't have to pick. Mm. I think the biggest thing is we live in these boxes of like, I have to do this or I'm this person or I have to show up in this way and I always encourage people, but well, what happens if you step outside of that box? Mm -hmm. What if you just come with an open heart and an open mind? And afterwards, you can decide like, okay, that was for me or that wasn't for me. But um, yeah, there's yeah. been a lot of people that first come and have e either, you know, my boss sent me or my wife sent me. And then afterwards, they're like, what was that? And they're blown away. And they remember that mm. there's so much more than this physical body. Yeah. And so, I mean, I live in a world where I believe that everything is medicine, right? Everything is happening for me. And even though some medicine is really hard to swallow and bitter, it's still good for me. Mm. You know, mm. one of the things mm. that we talked about recently that I'm navigating through right now is the death of my cousin who committed suicide, you know, because wow. she was a trans woman. Sorry to hear that. Wow. And so that medicine, it's bitter and it hurts and it's raw, mm. but it's also an opportunity and a catalyst for us for, as a family and for just even society to have some really hard conversations, mm. to be able to start to see ourselves as a human race and not you're black, you're brown, you're white, you're trans, you're gay, you're you know disabled. But when we start to let go of the things that make us different and we start to focus on the things that bring us together. I think that that is the medicine that we need right now. Mm -hmm. And as all the things that are happening right now, we need medicine. Mm -hmm. In that Tim um, perspective, I don't know if this is the right question, but like, how do you see um, when it comes to pain or loss or like, how do you, how do you understand that? Like, how do you like accept that? How does that, how do you process that for you? Yeah. So for me, um, the way that I've handled the grief is it's almost like in Native American culture, the first couple of days it's about you mm. and you are screaming, you are grieving, you are clearing those big emotions out of the body because mm. what happens is a lot of the times these things happen to us and we have big emotions and instead of feeling them, we either push them in our subconscious mind or we push them into our body and we don't acknowledge them. So they get tucked away, but then they'll come back. And that's how we sometimes have disease in the body. Mm. That's why some people have a hard time being able to um, thrive in this world because they're carrying pain from even when they were children, mm. right? So mm. in what I do, we're addressing where does that pain come from? Mm. You know, mm. what limiting stories or beliefs have you created from that pain mm. and so for me the first couple of days was about me really feeling and sitting in it and there was rage there was anger I was very mad at just us as a society because yeah. I'm like we failed her yeah. um but then after that after I cleared some of that anger and that that rage then hope came in right and I was able to understand that this is an opportunity for us to heal, for us to have some of these conversations. And um, I believe that death isn't the end, but mm -hmm. the beginning of something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for me, I still feel her yeah, and yeah, I'm still yeah. connected. Mm -hmm. The physical body may not be here anymore, but there will be something beautiful that comes from this tragedy. Wow. Wow. I mean, yeah, because as you're just talking, you know, I I think personally for me, 
there is a lot of pain that I have, especially from like my past or unforgiveness that I think I have just because I feel like someone has wronged me and I just hold it onto myself. And I'm not thinking of that, how that might trans translate into other pains on my body or that I feel that I don't even know where it comes from, mm -hmm. um, which makes me think deeper of a whole different, you know, have a perspective of different like things in a different way. Um, which I am actually going to start like reviewing those and thinking more deeply into it. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask you this because I know that with, you know, entrepreneurs and we always want to be right. Like we always want to do things the way we want it. Yeah. Um, how do you how, do you have entrepreneurs who are clients of yours? Like what have you noticed yeah. um, with entrepreneurs you work with? So I am kind of very triggering sometimes for entrepreneurs and for even business owners, right? Because there's always like a formula. Mm. What is your ROI? And if I do A plus B, then it's going to equal C. And I don't really run my business in that way. Mm. My business is very intuitive. It goes in cycles. I understand my cycles. I understand my cycles with my business. I also understand um, what it needs for it to grow. And so an example would be a, a general goal for an entrepreneur would be, okay, I want my business to grow 22% each year, mm. right? Mm. But by having that number, sometimes it creates attachment, right? So if you don't get to that 22%, then you're like, oh, I failed, mm. right? So for me, I would almost have the same, uh, but I would say, I just want to grow, right? Mm. So it, it's not a hard number. It's more of a flow state. I just want my business to grow. So whether it's 2% or 200%, because I've set that intention, because I know that's what's going to happen, there's success in either way, mm. right? Mm. So for my entrepreneurs, I always work on them stepping in and trusting their gut um, I also work a lot about burnout. Yeah. I think a lot of the times we're like, grind, grind, yeah, grind, true. hustle, 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 go, go, go. And I remind them like, but why are you doing this? Mm. Like, what is your purpose? Mm. And I tell people like, you can't mess up at your purpose, right? So for me and my business, like this is my purpose. I can't fail at my purpose. So everything that I do is gonna like, lead me to the next thing. And so I don't have to necessarily like be at the steering wheel and pressing the gas so hard all of the time because I'm more in a state of flow. And I trust mm. that I am held through this and I trust that it's bigger than me and that this river is going to flow and take me where I need to go. So, so I want to challenge you as yeah. uh, from an entrepreneur perspective, mm -hmm. how do you, you know, measure your progress then if you don't have like I'm going to do get to 20 percent or 10 percent or I have this um, goal of fitness and I want to get to this is the one I want to get to when I get there. How do you measure the progress you've had yeah. to get to where you want to be? So to me, I had to one of the first lessons that I learned as an entrepreneur was how do you measure success? What is success to you, right? And before this, I was in finance. So it was numbers, it was black and white, right? And I remember the very first time I had an event, I was like, I gotta get butts in the seat. I want it to be sold out. Like, I want this to be successful, right? And so I did some things where it was like, oh, you know, you can pay me later or don't worry about it, just come because I was so focused on the idea of success, which is, selling out mm. and the day of everyone was canceling left and right and i was like wow. right yeah, and i remember yeah, yeah. thinking my team telling me like your worst fear happened now what mm. you know are you not going to show up for the people that are here because it's not sold out or like yeah what mm. the thing that you were afraid of just happened so are you going to give up mm. and i was like no and it completely shifted on what i view as success. So to me, success is how I feel and how I impact the people that are around me. Beautiful. You know, do I leave people better than I found them? Mm. And that to me is success. Mm. I, I double down. I agree with you 100%. Um, one of the people who I listen to and watch is Simon Sinek. Mm -hmm. And he says this thing about, you know, most athletes who are like maybe a marathon runner or a boxer at the end of their career might get depressed because their whole life have been chasing this success, this mm -hmm. progress, this medal. And once you have all these medals, you have all these medals on your wall, and then you realize that you're just yourself. Like that's just a medal on the wall. Yeah. Like you have nothing you've actually impacted in other people's lives. Then you get depressed. But he says that the most successful person is that person who impacts people's lives. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you can look at 10 people you've impacted their lives and say, hey, I help the next person, right? right. So I agree with you on that. I'm totally 100% with yeah. you.
Um, so my, my next question is this. Well, but before we wrap up, okay. I want to go back and yeah. add a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. So especially with entrepreneurs, if we're so focused on like the finish line and the ending, right? Because that's what people see. True. That's the Instagram post True. of look what I'm doing, True. right? That a lot of the times we don't really pay attention to like the journey. So if you're constantly climbing that mountain and you're not stopping to look at the scenery around you and you're not stopping to celebrate the things that you accomplish, then a lot of the people that I work with are successful entrepreneurs or even professional athletes and they get to the top of the mountain and like you said they're like now what mm, right mm, now what mm. and so if you are learning from your cycles and yourself and really focusing on the journey and the flow it's a completely different journey of the mountain versus the I gotta grind I gotta hustle I gotta grind yeah. I gotta hustle you know empowering through like in life we have to power through everything mm. and that takes so much energy and that's so tiring that a lot of the times by the time people get to me they're just exhausted mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and this is the reason why i always eat a big a big plate of fufu <laughs> and a goosey soup i celebrate my wins mm -hmm. um but i do agree with you because as entrepreneurs me from my perspective from my experience i've i think i get to a point where even if it's a win i'm like ah, it's okay we, we we need to get we need to do better what's the next thing what's the next thing and mm -hmm. like I, I i i do that all the time where like my wife would be like, hey, you celebrate. I'm like, ah, you know, it's all right. We, we, we're we not where we want to be at. But, like, celebrating the little steps yeah. is very important so that we don't get to them and be like, oh, man, it's I'm here and I saw what. Um, let me ask you this. So is there a complete entrepreneur? Have you seen a complete entrepreneur from your perspective of, of mental health? Or does that not exist? Or what did they get wrong? No, there, there is no such thing as complete, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that as humans, we are a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. We're constantly shifting, right? We're constantly having these internal deaths and rebirths. Mm. And as we learn and as we go through whatever lessons come our way and we experience them and we learn what the lesson is, then it's kind of like that death of that cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. Mm. And so mm. everything is cyclical in life, mm. right? So mm. I tell people mm. and I teach them also, you know, let's pay attention to the cycles. So we have an entrepreneur that really wants to drive like this you know product or um something big that they're working on but it's not the right time um, i tell them i'm like this is like you trying to plant seeds in the winter time like you're wasting so much energy because the ground is frozen right now is not the time versus right now it's summertime the ground is fertile right now right now as a collective and as the world we are putting in so much work everyone mm. is out there doing yeah. the things yep. and then once yep. fall comes it's time to harvest it's time to celebrate so I pay. I teach them to pay attention to their own cycles of themselves and also their business. Mm, mm. Wow, um, I, I'm I'm taking that with me because um, mm. I actually do need it. Just because you know, um, I, I just love that you said that. There's no complete entrepreneur because that's something that we feel like we want to get to. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we've talked about you know entrepreneurs having this goal of where they want to get to or um, what they want to do. But I want to ask this because I know a lot of people who watch the show are entrepreneurs like. What are some steps that we can start taking to be more present, to be more intentional, to be more, you know, uh, closer to earth, like yeah. being more present in what we do as opposed to just chasing all these things going around? Yeah. Two of the, the main things that I work on when people come and see me is what is your morning routine and what's your night routine, right? Because mm -hmm. your morning is like, how are you stepping into the world? And most people wake up, jump up, and they just run into doing, right? Got to get the kids out and they're rushing. And I encourage people like take a moment in the morning to take care of you first, to take some deep breaths, to meditate, to ground, to visualize your day. And you start to fill your cup first before you jump into the world and start pouring mm. into others, mm. right? So mm. that the morning routine is really important. You probably wanna add some meditation, some movement in there, but you gotta take care of yourself first because what happens throughout the day, especially with entrepreneurs, you're talking to different people. You are, um, so a little bit of you stays with every person you touch, every person than that you talk to, True. right? True. And so then by the end of the day, our energy is so fragmented. It's all over the place. So the night routine is really about bringing all of your energy back together, bringing your power because you've kind of scattered it throughout the day. And we want to bring it back so that you go into the dream world 
whole. Mm. But there's all kinds of things that you can do for your mental health. Hydration is really important. Getting outside and being in the sun, a vitamin D deficiency is going to look the same and feel the same as depression. So some people may feel like they have depression, but it's just a vitamin D deficiency, right? Moving your body is really important. Connecting to um, things that give you purpose and bring you joy is really important. Mm, mm, um, continue mm. to be the student and to grow. Um, being in nature is healing. You know, that in itself, when you're in water, when you're up in the mountains, your energy just shifts. You know, as humans, we've become so disconnected from that web of life, from that energy, from, from Mama Earth, that we forget that we're a part of something bigger and we're part of a bigger collective. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't want to keep saying I agree with you, but I agree with you. Uh -huh. um, just because like the vitamin vitamin D thing, right? Um, because sometimes I'm I stay indoors so much work and editing, and I'm like, why am I so depressed right now? Because I haven't been able to go outside, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like back when I was a kid growing up, it was I was always outside. It was always playing around, being outside, you know, being fruits and all that. But I feel like in in the U.S., mm -hmm. we are restricted to our apartments or our offices. Those four walls that we see that we never actually go outside and experience yeah. things. We're overly stimulated, mm -hmm. right? We want fast transformation. Yes. We want that fast, like dopamine hit. So we're like scrolling and, you know, we have fast food. Everything's like fast, 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 fast. And so that's not really how nature works. Mm -hmm. And if we think of ourselves as part of nature, there's a natural flow, right? And so if we don't allow ourselves to rest, to connect with our souls, with our spirits, then we almost become like these machines. Mm. And it's like, go, 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 go. Um, but mm, mm. I, can we cut? Because I lost where you asked me. <laughs> well, you go, we were just following up on the... Uh, the, the fact that we always on the go in on the, the go in the box. yeah so even as a society right you have so many children now that have like attention deficit disorder and can't be still and we are uncomfortable with being bored we want every second to be filled with something mm. we're not comfortable with stillness because what happens is when we're still then all of the things that we've pushed to the side come right and so it's like well don't want to look at that yet yeah, so let me yeah. let me do something else let me start something else so we we start to bypass and all of those things inside of us start to boil right and it just gets louder and louder and louder and eventually we have to pay attention i forget what the quote is like if you don't make time for your your healing you're going to be forced you know true i forget what the quote is but yeah but basically if you don't make time you're going to be forced to to take time for yourself and that is so true. You got to start paying mm -hmm. attention to how you're feeling. You got to pay attention to what's important to you, how you're healing your mind, your body, and your spirit. Low key, Alex, I feel like this episode is an innovation for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel attacked, but in a good way. No. It's like, no, not like in a good way, yeah. like, it's making me it's, think intentionally, right? Yes, it's it's a gentle <laughs> nudge. It's yes. a gentle nudge. I needed this episode. Yeah. Because, yeah. We forget. We True. forget, we get so caught up and consumed by what everyone else is doing and what's happening in the world mm -hmm. that we kind of get lost in the sauce. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And what is that thing that's going to pull you out and bring you back home to you? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we don't even really know ourselves. You know, I always ask people, like, why do you want to be an entrepreneur? What brings you joy from, from being an entrepreneur? And... Um, Sometimes it's because this thing is what's going to make me great or because this is what my parents expect or sometimes they don't even know, right? They've just started this mission mm, and kind of mm, get lost. Mm, but mm. this is, it's always, you always have to come home to you. Yeah. Um, man, uh, I feel like, so for me, I don't know if, I, I'm, I have an, like an intuition that you're not as addicted to your phone as I am to mm -hmm. my phone. Um, how do you manage that? Because I feel like every time I'm always on my phone, I'm always playing a video or I'm always trying to get away from whatever it is, eating and playing. Like, how do I, yeah. how do you get back into the zone of yourself? Yeah, I have like a love-hate relationship with my phone, mm -hmm. right? Like, I think it's a great tool. Obviously, with social media, you have access to so many people. You can share so much of your wisdom there. But I try to limit it, right? So when I start to notice that I'm just scrolling, 
I'm like, okay, it's time to put it down. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then another thing is setting boundaries because if you really think of social media as like an open forum and a portal and me working with energy, all those people have access to your energy. That's true. Right. And I'm like, no, sometimes I have to set that boundary. So I have my phone on do not disturb from 8.30 at night until 10.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So there's no access mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. um, because I have to take care of me. And I also, you know, the entrepreneur side, even though a lot of the times it is that grind and hustle and the startup. Um, but hmm. most of the time we're doing that for our families. Right. And so I noticed that, you know, back when I was in finance, because I wanted to be successful, I would put my family in the back burner. And even though I would tell myself I'm doing this for them, my children didn't understand that. My children just wanted time with me. And so I always make sure that the people that I'm doing this for and the reason why I'm here and the people that I love are getting the best and the best version of me and the best parts of me. Yeah. So sometimes I need to step away from serving others and my business so that I can truly focus on what's important and the people that really rely on me. Mm. Um, as we're coming towards the end of the show, I, I think I've noticed this thing, like whenever I'm out in like nature of like, for example, when I go into like my in-laws places that live like outside like the country, I feel like I'm more productive. I feel like I want to do more work. But whenever I get back into the city, I feel like I have this clutter. Like, yeah. what is that about? Well, because we're overstimulated, right? You're in the city and there's so many people and mm. there's noises and it's congested. And all of that energy is bombarding us at all times, right? And so when you're out in the country, like you're open, it's mm. peaceful. You're tapping into a different version of yourself that may be easier to be productive and to be, thank you, not only productive, but creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a creation and creativity is such a big part of entrepreneurship because we're creating something new. Mm. So you can have a lot of fun with the creative process, which I really enjoy. And so when you're probably out in nature, like that's the energy that you're top, like tapping into, mm -hmm. plugging into. If you start to think of yourself as an energetic being with, you know, a, a, a field around you, what are you plugging into? And most of us are plugging into like stress, um, overwork and all of the things because most of society is. And when you unplug from that and you plug into nature, like this natural flow mm. starts to happen. True. And then you start to create from a place of peace and fun and joy versus the grind and the hustle. True, true. Um, now, I want to ask you this. So what do you think about therapy? Because I know you're not a therapist. Like, what mm. do you what do you think of it? What do you... I think that therapy is wonderful. I think having someone to talk to is great. Um, I always tell people, do what serves you, right? So for me, sometimes like coming to me might be too intense to, for some people. They're like, that's a lot. I'm not ready to go yet. Give me but 10 for, steps. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me talk to someone first. And so the main thing is what I tell my 14 year old son is know that if anything ever feels too heavy, you need to come and ask for help. You need to have that conversation, whether it's with me, with your father, with a therapist, but don't, don't leave it for another day. Mm. Don't put it in the mm. back burner. Don't let it become so heavy mm. that it becomes so painful mm. that you have to leave this physical world to escape, mm. you know? And that is mm. what happened with my cousin Alexia, like yeah. being trans was too much for her. It was too painful. She didn't feel supported by, you know, society, everything that's happening right now with different bills. And the way that I, when I meditated on that pain, what they showed me was we have all been in a situation where we step into a room and it feels uncomfortable, where people look at us weird or we look different and there's no one that looks like us and we shrink down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for some of these humans, that's what life is. It's that room. When they step into the world, people are looking at them and people are telling them, maybe not physically with their voice, but with their energy, like, you don't belong here. You're different and I don't like you. Mm. And I think for what I teach people is how to step into that room, how to take up space, how to be able to shift the energy in that room. And so it, that's the internal work that I do 
But I think it's also time now to address the room. Yeah. It's yeah. time to address the people that are like, it's time to look at your limiting beliefs. Mm. Why are you afraid of people that look different than you? Why are you so triggered by someone that that thinks differently? I think it's so beautiful when people come together and it's not about proving right or wrong, but having intelligent conversations and stepping into them with a sense of curiosity because everything in life is perspective, mm -hmm. right? True. True. You, when you experience something, you and I can go and experience something and you're going to have a completely different perspective because it's running through the filter of Zeke based on your experiences, True. on your traumas and all of the things. And it's going to come through Alex, which is a completely different experience. So when you really start to honor other people's truths and other people's perspectives, then your soul, you start to grow. Mm, mm. I, that's that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Um and like with that, is there, I mean, cause I, I feel like where we live and where we stay, there's so many ideas. And like you said, you feel, it feels like it has to be this one box, the other box. You can be like in the middle or be able to experience different things. Yeah. Um, now I want to ask you this, when you see people, can you see, are you able to see through people? Like when you see someone, is there things that people do that you kind of understand who they are or what they're about to do next? Yes and no. Okay. So I'm not intentionally tapping into people's energy and trying to read their minds. I think sometimes people, when I'm introduced to them, they're like, mm, <laughs> like, like, don't tap in, you know? It's not that I'm not jumping in people's yeah. energy just for fun, mm -mm. but I can feel when someone's authentic mm -mm. because their energy is just flowing. And the mm. minute that they start to lie or they're not, or they step into a state of fear or like mm, their energy stops and I can feel that. Mm -mm. Um, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of- I know of you definitely felt that. <laughs> yeah, you were like, oh, what's that? I was like, hey, I was I, like, hey, you're yeah, energy. But in a very gentle yeah. way, I'm yeah. like, hey, your energy shifted. What yeah. happened? It definitely shifted. I was like, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> what are we wait, doing wait, here? Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. I was, yeah, I didn't. Because that, that took me, because, like, again, where I come from is, like, there are levels to spirituality that mm -hmm. sometimes I get scared of because I don't want to get to whatever the next level right. is. But I don't feel like I have the capacity to be in that realm. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let me, let me step take a back. step back and be, you know. Um, but as we're getting towards the end of the show, is there something you want to uncover that we didn't touch that you yeah. kind of like want to Just talk even about? what you're talking about right now where it is scary and most of us as a collective now or as a society, we're mm. living in a state of fear. And you see that, but everything that's going on around us. And when you allow yourself to really look at that fear and see where it comes from and to kind of dissect it, then there's a lot of medicine and there's a lot of wisdom there. And I think it's really beautiful when I think about like, wow, how did this little Mexican girl yeah. from Guadalajara, Mexico, end up in Kansas City at this time. Mm. It's really beautiful because I really feel like this is the heart of the country. This mm -hmm. is the heartland. And I love Kansas City because it's such a beautiful community and people are open and people are ready to shift. And this is why why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, wow. Um, I think this might be my second to the final question. Mm -hmm. um, when you work with an individual, what is your goal for them when you are like done with working with them or like, what is your goal when yeah. you work with someone? So when I work one-on-one -on -one with someone and they come into my space in my room, my goal is to fill that room with so much love mm. that that person has the ability to peel back the different layers of themselves that feel safe enough to address some of the wounds that they've carried for such a long time. And through that, the healing naturally happens. Mm. It's mm. not an A, B, and C. That's why sometimes it's even hard to explain to people what I do because I'm like, I, I can't tell you what's going to happen because we're letting go of control and whatever needs to come up will come up and we will address it, but we'll address it together. Mm. And mm. by mm. being that support system for that person, they feel stronger to be able to address some of the patterns and some of the programming that they've had their whole life. And it's really beautiful to see 
the progression because people will come and be like, man, normally that would have rocked me. I would have been stressed mm. out or I would have spiraled for weeks. And now I'm like, it's okay. Yeah. And yeah. so you start to see yeah. how they evolve. You start to see how they heal. And then you start to see how that shifts the world around them. And what's really beautiful is when they start to enjoy life, when they start to see the beauty and the little things and the little moments. And when they remember like, this is supposed to be a beautiful, enjoyable experience. And even though sometimes there's hardship and there's lessons that we have to learn at the end of the day, I feel good about being here. Yeah. I mean, just this whole episode, I've been, it's, it has my brain thinking of like, what are some habits that I've fallen into that are not healthy for me? Yeah. What are some things I'm holding on to that I shouldn't be holding on to that's weighing on me without even me knowing it mentally or physically, right? Yeah. I mean, I think this is a conversation that everyone needs to have with themselves. Yeah. Or if they can't get to that part, get help. Yeah, because we become addicted, right? So mm. there's socially accepted addictions such as True. working, True. such even like working out and they become a crutch, right? Mm. Because it's like, I have to do this thing to bypass what I'm feeling and what it, and then there's, you know, other addictions that aren't socially accepted mm. like drugs and drinking yeah. and whatever, yeah. but they're all coming from the same place of like I can't do this myself mm. so I'm going to ignore this thing that is happening and instead focus on this mm. and so this is just a space to like you're already doing it right mm. the first step is having that awareness of yes. like oh there is some things I need to True. look at and True. what's really beautiful is like you're looking at it now and so I always talk to people that have kids too. And I'm like, what you heal within yourself will also be passed down to your children. What you don't heal within yourself will also be passed down to your children. Mm. So when we think about legacy, usually mm. we're really focused about money and business mm. and the tangible material things, but healing mm. is mm. the best, you know, thing that you can give your children mm. because then they don't have to deal with some of the pain that maybe you've carried for a while. I hear that. I, I definitely hear that because personally, I know that there are things that I'm I'm trying to get away from right now that it's not just me. It's things that have been passed down generation to generation that I'm trying to be able to figure out how to be able to be improved, like improve myself, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that in my generation, I can be able to get more help mm -hmm. so that my kids and my grandkids are not going to be able to deal with that yeah. when they grow up. Yeah. Um, and as we come towards the end of the show, I just want to say, Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, thank you for the cacao. Uh, yeah. Thank you for uh, the prayer. I say it's a prayer yeah. um, because it got it got us together. When you hold hands, I just I, I, I say you it's feel a the energy coming together. Yeah. Um, but uh, how can people contact you if they want to be able to reach out to you and see what you do? Yeah, they can connect via social media, all you know, Instagram, Facebook. It's all via Lobos Vitality. My website is villalobosvitality.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Alejandra Villalobos McAnderson. Um, but I want to leave you with the homework, right? Mm, mm. Take a moment to really look at what are your limiting beliefs, to really be honest with yourself of this is what I need to work on. Because like I said, that's the first step. And once you do that first step, then the next one will appear. Right. So what do I need to do to start addressing these things? Because I think right now it's the time it's it's we are being asked right now to really shift as a collective of humans and True. to, like I said, step out of our brains and into our hearts. Yeah. And that will completely shift our world. Thank you for that. I thank you for that. I, I know I needed that. I know someone else who's watching also needs that. Um, but I just want to say again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your yeah. knowledge, your love. Um, and I just want to say to anyone who's watching from home, you know what time it is. See your entrepreneur, follow us, subscribe, share, let people know. And as usual, we're right here, Fight Up Studios. I'm your host, Zeke Wanganga. And as I always say, stay fired up, don't give up. And I'll see you on this episode. Bye bye for now. To see how our city's entrepreneurs do what they do, tune in to City Entrepreneur on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episodes drop every Thursday.